Hi everyone, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com and I am here with my weekly inspirational vlog. Um, as they say, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed today, so I was not feeling very inspired and in fact, I was just kind of downright grumpy and had a bad attitude. So. I decided to take my own advice. A few segments back, we talked about what to do when your sojo has left you, and that's how I felt this morning. So um, I kind of forced myself to my sewing table here and got out some fabric that I liked. I wanted to attempt this um, hot pad that had binding around it and I did make that and I will show it to you but it was definitely less than perfect binding is not my uh it's definitely not a skill that I am very good at so I want to keep practicing it is super cute but um the point of telling you that is I knew I needed instant gratification so I was like what am I actually good at what am I guaranteed I can make and be satisfied with so I can get the heck out of this funk that I found myself in today and um, boxes little bins caddies I love them it's a slam dunk using the T method I'm for sure going to be successful and so after I finish this uh, wonky little pot holder slash hot pad, and you can see the binding uh, was less than perfect. It's, it's cute and I, I'm definitely gonna use it. Uh, probably more likely as like a little mini um, mug rug than actually as a pot holder, but I do like the colors and that fabric is fun, but my binding's super, messy and sloppy and I know that's just a matter of practice but when you're not in the best of moods you don't really want to practice and you darn sure don't want to strive towards perfection so that's when I went over to my little stash and decided it was time to get out this fun fabric um, the gypsy and me would absolutely love to have a VW van. Any of these would do. And I would just travel the country meeting all of you and we could sew together and it would just be such a wonderful time. But the mom in me says, you're going to have to settle for a desktop caddy. So that's what we're going to make today. This is a little bonus tutorial that dovetails beautifully with my ongoing AMC workshop. AMC, if you're not familiar, is my masterclass. I host four of those each year for the SoSpire patrons. We're in our last masterclass of 2021, and this evening I'll meet with the ladies and we're going to be talking about what I call order of operations. It's the order in which the project is assembled. It makes all the difference in the world. Um, and it can make your life very easy or very miserable if you do not give enough consideration to the order in which you assemble the pieces. So many, many years ago, I came about what I call and teach here at Sospire the T method. And that is what we're going to use today to assemble this super cute desktop caddy that you can use for a holiday gift. As well, I met with um, some members of the Sospire Facebook group yesterday on Zoom. We brainstormed a really awesome list of fun to make holiday gifts, and I will um, share that with everybody. I've already posted the PDF and the graphic on the Facebook group page, but I'll be sure to drop that in at the end of this video. And then I'll leave a nice long span of time there so you can take in all those ideas. Um, they came up with a lot of really fun ones and this is my contribution to that list as well. 
So I'm going to show you how to assemble this and give you the pattern measurements and we'll just call it a fun little bonus tutorial in case there's anybody else out there like me just not feeling the creativity today. And then I also want to go ahead and announce right now the winners of the six pack of So Aspire PDF tutorials. Each Friday between now and the end of the year, I'm drawing six lucky winners who are members of the So Aspire private Facebook group. There's a link down below, no cost to join. All you have to do is answer the questions and you'll be auto approved into the group. Um, so I have selected our six winners. I'm gonna go ahead and share those now in case you're not interested in making a desktop caddy with me today. So I have those lovely ladies here. If you are amongst the winners for this week, please message me directly from the Facebook group. I'll need your email address and the six Sospire PDFs that you would like, and I will deliver those as soon as possible. If you uh, try to reach out over the weekend, I'm not on the computer quite as much, so it might be uh, Monday before I get back to you, but I'm sure you understand. Okay, so winner number one is Lee Ann Crane. Congratulations, Lee Ann, and thank you for being a part of our group page. Ann Janison, congratulations, Ann. We're happy to have you in the group. Linda Griffin, yay, Linda, congratulations. May Minica, congratulations to you, May. Christine Veronica, we're happy to have you with us. And Carol George, we are also happy to have you join our group. So all six of these ladies are members of the Sospire private group page. That's where you can ask questions about the Sospire tutorials. You can share photos of your Sospire makes and in general, ask basic uh, sewing questions or ask for recommendations and things like that. So it's a nice space. We have about 3,000 members and we are continuing to grow. And again, if you'd like to be entered into this drawing for the six pack of Sospire PDFs, and that's in celebration of six years of Sospire, then you will need to join that Facebook group page. So everything you need to do so is down in the notes as well as on sospire.com. Okay, so now on to my fun little make. Here's what the exterior looks like. And I have used the Annie Soft and Stable on that. And then I kind of just ran some random rows of stitching around that to hold the soft and stable in place. So I wanna give you the measurements. So you're going to need in total four of the side panels, which are eight by eight. Two of those will have soft and stable and two of those will have Pelon 808. Then you're going to need six of the front and rear and base panels. Those are all the same and they are eight inches tall by 14 inches long. So uh, four eight by eight panels, six eight by 14 panels. And I have pre-crafted the exterior which comes together in the exact same way as the interior. So that's what we're gonna sew here today. Then handles are totally optional on this if you did want to add little side handles these ones here are uh, nine inches long by five inches wide and i just use the standard so spire a uh, four ply handle method i did put a little bit of the annies in the center of that and then three rows of stitching and I really like the stability and feel of that. So that's a great option for your handles. 
the Pelon 808 will work just as well. So if you are just joining us, uh, I want to welcome you to the T method. This is an awesome method of construction if you would like to create a box, see anything. Um, and you can use a variety of rectangles and squares are your only option for this. But they can be in a variety of sizes, so there's a lot you can do with this method. So what you're going to want to do is begin with your front panel and that didn't adhere very good there. It's going to, I'm sure it's going to be just fine because I'm going to stitch everything, but uh, normally I would head back over to the iron and repress that. I am considering actually ordering one of those heat presses. So if anybody has recommendations uh, for one of those, please drop that in the comments. I would love to just be able to put these panels right under a press. Psh, done. Okay, so you're going to want to begin with your two 8x8 eight eight side panels and your front panel, which is 8x14. Position your front panel right side up and your side panels right sides facing so that you get something that looks like this. And then using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, you're going to sew down the right and the left hand sides. I have a 90-14 needle and a 3.0 stitch length. Aside for a moment and you're going to have your rear panel and your base panel. You're going to position those right sides facing and then stitch down one of the long edges using 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. VWs are going to be the base of mine. And so now I'm going to bring back over the tri folding panel here and I'm going to position that right sides facing up on my table. And then I want to take the bi folding panel and position that base on the base of that front panel and center that. So once I get this clipped, I will show you exactly what that looks like. So there's the bifolding panel centered on the trifolding panel. Then you're going to stitch seam to seam. And I just go by feeling that. You can mark it if you need to. So you'll start 5 eighths of an inch in right on that seam and you're using 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then you'll stop right on that seam as well. So now you have something that looks like a large T. So you have the tri-folding and the bi-folding panels attached. The next step is to align the base of your side panel with the side of your base panel. And you just fold that in. And again, you're going to stitch just seam to seam, which is different than end to end. And 
if you can see the box starting to take shape. So again, now I want to align the base of the side with the side of the base and stitch seam to seam. is what I call setting the stage and all that's left to do is raise up that rear wall and so you do that by aligning the side of the side with the side of that rear panel and stitching from the top to the seam again five eighths of an inch has to be joined. Just line that up and stitch from the top to the seam. So I have my interior complete now and the combination of the Annie soft and stable and the Pelon 808 is fabulous. It really results in a lightweight standalone structure. So what you need to do now is take those seams and open them up at each corner and turn them over about an inch and that is what that looks like and so do all four corners first you're just opening up the seams to minimize the bulk and turning that corner around one inch and so you're going to do that to all four seams And then once you have all four corners pinned down, then you can finger press that edge and it generally comes out pretty straight. You're looking for about an inch lip all the way around the interior. what that looks like it's really cute it's definitely it's going to be a happy caddy and i think that's what i'm going to name it since its purpose was to cheer me up and i'm happy to say it's working and i hope it does the same for you too because i'm probably not the only one having a rough time so darling nice spacious boxy tote so the in the exterior rather comes together in exactly the same way the difference is you have the foam on the exterior and you turn the exterior right sides out and then you fold that top edge inward an inch so then you can take your interior and fit that inside of the exterior and so once i get the base generally in place then I begin by lining up those side seams first. And I have to do all of the corners again first before I can go in and start straightening out the front 
and the rear of this but again the trick really is getting those side seams aligned or the corners because then everything else kind of falls into place Okay, so you can see my inside is still kind of wrinkly, but I have those side seams and corners aligned, so now I can start molding that lining and pushing that into that foam, and the interfacing on the interior will cling to the fabric that lines that foam and so you'll have a nice fit on the interior once you fiddle with that enough and I just like to lay those long edges down on the table and press on those and do the same thing and you could actually take it over to the iron and press it if you want to but I do try to get as much of it in place as I can with my hands. And you just kind of poke out those corners. And that's how it looks. So now you have a choice. If you do not attach handles, you'll be able to fold that top edge over and like on the sides I could see that little pink accent there um, and that's a very cute look. You s I technically could still fold it over with the handles, it's just the handles wouldn't be very functional then. But the benefit to attaching handles is if you have a heavy load, you could just pick that up and move it around your surface space without any problem. So I do prefer to add handles uh, to mine. So those handles get positioned on the sides about an inch from each seam and I tuck those in between the interior and the exterior layers. I suppose if you had longer handles you could also attach those across the longer front and rear panels if you wanted as well. I'll show you what this looks like so you can see. My uh, preference is for the nice little short handles on the side. I just really like that look. And then you want to make sure that your handles are the same length. So that's what it looks like right now. And then the next step is to put this up on the machine deck and sew all the way around the perimeter. I do back stitch at each handle intersection to reinforce those. And you have the option of adding a second row of stitching all the way around for heavy loads or you could come back in and install rivets or add just a row of stitching right below the handles. Those are great options. So I like to begin at the handle so that I can reduce the likelihood that that's going to come undone there. And I will have to realign that. So I start at one of the handles and then I'm just gonna go nice and slow all the way around. I have the right hand edge of the presser foot aligned with the top of the fabric.
so I've made it all the way around that and then I just go back in and kind of smooth out that interfacing. This would be a great time to give this one more press and then I want to give you the finished measurements on this happy caddy. It's really cute and it's going to hold a lot of stuff. This is going to sit on my writing desk and so it's going to hold my journals and the books that I am currently reading. But I could definitely see how it could hold a lot of fabric too, especially if you buy one yard or half yard cuts. This would be ideal for that. So our measurements on this are approximately 13 inches across the base, seven inches deep and seven inches tall. So super cute caddy. And in the beginning, I had talked to you just briefly about the order of operations and how it can make your life easier if you will take the time to work through the process and write down the steps and then analyze those steps to make sure that there isn't a better order in which you could go. And that's how I came about this original T method of construction is I was making boxy totes and um, the, all the instructions that I could find reference the birthing method turning them inside out and that just seems so cumbersome to me so that's how this method came about and then several years into um, producing bags like this we refined the method as a result of that questioning process and i changed the order of operation so that you attach these sides before you raise up that rear panel. This used to be the last step in the process and sometimes it would result in a wonky corner. And now you can see those corners are really nice. They're not wonky at all, they're nice and straight and there's uh, no weird gaps or puckers there. So um, that really is my main inspiration for you today is take a look at your process, your order of operations whenever you're making something, even if you're working with someone else's pattern, by all means, um, try to improve that process so that it makes your life easier. And then if you share with other people, that's even better. And that's what I try to do here at SoSpire. And even today with my grumpy old mood, I um, went ahead, showed up, and I did not know that I was even going to record this content for you, but I did feel inspired myself to share, and um, I hope that you get some joy from my happy caddy. So again, I just want to congratulate our winners of the six-pack of Sewspire Tutorials. That's Leanne Crane, Anne Janison, Linda Griffin, May Minica, Christine Veronica, and Carol Gerds. You are all entitled to six of my PDF tutorials. There's a link to my Etsy pattern shop down in the notes. I want to say a special thank you to anyone who does actually shop from my Etsy pattern shop. Your purchase helps offset the cost of the materials so I can continue to create these free videos for our community. I hope everyone has a beautiful weekend and you will join me on Tuesday when we will be creating a tassel and a little wallet to go with the autumn tote. Until then, as always, please know the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. Bye, everybody.